let's start with functions now notwithstanding the very mathematical notation that we use in it its concept is fairly simple let's jump in a function in x written as fx is just an expression in x so fx for example is equal to x cube minus 7 this is an expression in x right now instead of writing x cube minus 7 everywhere we can just write fx it makes it easier so think of it as the name of this particular expression so now if i were to say what is fa this means that what is the value of this expression when x is equal to a so all we have to do is we have to put a over here now if we were asked what is f2 for example what do we have to do we just have to put two over here so this is the value of the expression of course we can get a numerical value over here so we'll further simplify this Again, think of a function, this notation, as the name for the expression. Instead of writing this again and again, we can just write fx. Now, we can give the name of gx also as function. The gx is also a function in x. For example, this could be x upon 4. hx could be another function in x, which could be, say, 1 minus 2x cubed. Also, the now these are functions in the independent variable x, but we could have a function in, let's say, y also. So, fy is equal to y cube minus 2, right? So, this is how functions work. Don't worry about this complicated looking uh, you know, brackets. It's just, it's just a simple notation. It's just a notation to show you what an expression is. Yeah? Now, say given fx is equal to 4x cubed, what is the value of f3? We discussed right now that what is the meaning of f3? That wherever you have x, put it equal to 3. Simple as that. So, when fx is 4x cubed, f3 will be 4 into 3 cubed. Great. If fx is equal to x plus 1 cube upon 2x plus 3, what is the value of fa plus 1? So wherever we have x in this uh, expression, we'll put a plus 1 over there. So fa plus 1 is equal to, instead of x, we'll put a plus 1, plus 1 upon 2x plus 3. So, 2 times a plus 1 plus 3. Now, note here that we need to put these brackets a plus 1 around uh, a plus 1 over here. And why is that? Because we cannot write it as 2a plus 1 plus 3. This will not be correct because we have a 2x over here. So wherever we have x, we have to put a plus 1. So the entire thing is multiplied by 2. And that is why we do need these brackets around a plus 1. In case it gets a little confusing, do one thing. Wherever you have x in the function. So for example, here you have fx is equal to x plus 1 whole q upon 2x plus 3. Before you put in the value of a plus 1, put brackets around x everywhere. So say x plus 1 whole cube upon 2x plus 3. Now, inside this bracket, put whatever you have to. Like, for example, in case we were to find out 2a plus 1 upon 3, f of 2a plus 1 upon 3. What would we do wherever we have this x in the brackets? So, I would say this is 2a plus 1 upon 3 plus 1 whole cube upon 2, 2a plus 1 upon 3 plus 3. In this case, then you will not make a mistake. So wherever the uh, function looks a little complicated or what we have to put in place of x looks a little complicated, just put brackets around x and then uh, replace x. Okay, let's look at an example now. For how many of the following functions is fx equal to f of minus x for all x? What does this mean? Is fx equal to f of minus x? How will you find f of minus x? It's simple. Wherever we have x, we'll put minus x. That is uh, going to give us f of minus x. 
Okay, so we already have fx over here. fx is x square plus 3x minus 3. How do we find f of minus x? Simply, wherever we have x, put minus x in its place. So minus x square plus 3 of minus x minus 3, which gives us what? Gives us x square minus 3x minus 3. Now, are the two the same? Is x square plus 3x minus 3 same as x square minus 3x minus 3? No, they're not. So that is why here fx is not equal to f of minus x. Okay, let's check out what is f of minus x over here. f of minus x is minus x whole square. Wherever we have x, we put minus x. Plus, this is your absolute value sign. Uh, we look at it uh, in a whole lot of detail in an upcoming video. So wherever we have x, we have put minus x. Instead of this x, we have put minus x over here. So this becomes x squared plus 1 plus x. Now, is this equal to this? Well, no, it isn't. Here we have 1 minus x in the absolute value, whereas here we have 1 plus x. So again, they are not equal. Now, uh, we are going to learn an absolute value, and this will come a little later, that 1 minus x is equal to x minus 1 because mod of x is equal to mod of minus x. So that is why, you know, if we multiply the whole thing inside that absolute value by minus 1, then it still remains the same. But 1 minus x is not equal to uh, 1 plus x, right? Um, if this is confusing, just don't worry too much about it. We are going to look at it very soon. Now, fx is mod of x cube, uh, x to the power 5. Okay, so f of minus x. Let's focus on finding that. That is minus x to the power 5 because it has an odd power to become minus. Then minus 3x cube. Again, because it has an odd power, x cube. And uh, since we have x square over here, it will stay as it is minus 2x square. Again, this is not equal to this. If we do multiply the whole thing inside by minus 1, what do we get? We get x to the power 5 plus 3x cubed plus 2x square. So now note, Again, that here, this and this are different because there's a negative over here in front of 2x square, where there's a positive over here in front of 2x square. So fx is not equal to f of minus x in all these three cases. Okay, what is here? fx is x to the power 7 minus x. So what is f to the power minus x? So instead of uh, x to the power 7, we'll get minus x to the power 7, again, odd exponent. And instead of minus x, we'll get a plus x because we are replacing the x by minus x. Now, if we multiply whatever is inside by minus 1, what do we get? We get x to the power 7 minus x. So here, my fx was x to the power 7 minus x, uh, absolute value of that. And my, for my f minus x also, the absolute values of x to the power 7 minus x. Hence here, fx is equal to f of minus x, right? Think of another very simple function where fx is equal to f of minus x. The first thing that comes to my mind, fx is equal to f of minus x would be for x square, right? If fx is equal to x square, then f of minus x is also equal to minus of x square, which is again equal to x square. Okay, let's look at the other function. fx is 2x squared plus mod of 3x into 4. So then f of minus x is equal to 2x squared will remain 2x squared because the moment I put minus x, it will still be, uh, when it's squared, it will still be x squared only. And plus mod of 3 of minus x into 4. And since it's an ab uh, absolute value of minus 3x into 4, it will still remain 3x into 4. So this becomes 2x squared plus 3x into 4, right? 
All right. So here also fx is equal to f of minus x. Now, uh, yet again, let me point out that this example was mostly using absolute values. And in case you're not comfortable with those, just relax. Doesn't matter. Uh, very shortly, we'll look at the absolute value video and then all these things will become very clear. So we know the common operators that are there. For example, we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. We know what we are supposed to do in case, you know, let's say we write 2 plus 3 or 2 multiplied by 3, right? Uh, but we could also define our own operators. For example, I could say theta is an operator such that a theta b is equal to a plus b by 2. So whenever I write theta between two numbers, what I'm expecting is for you to give me the arithmetic mean of the two numbers. So for example, if I say what is 2 theta 3, it just means that you have to find this value where a is 2, a is 2 and b is 3. So you would say 2 plus 3 by 2 will be the value of 2 theta 3. Now, for example, if I were to write 2 theta 3, theta 4, what does this mean? That we have to first find out what is 2 theta 3, whatever is in this bracket. First, the brackets have to be solved, right? So 2 theta 3, we have to find out 2 plus 3 divided by 2, which is going to give us 2.5 inside the bracket. Then theta 4. So again, we have to find the arithmetic mean of 2.5 and 4. So again, we'll do that same calculation and we say 2.5 plus 4 upon 2. So an operator, a user defined operator works just like these operators. Right? When we have it between two numbers, it defines what function we have to, what calculation we have to perform, what we have to do with the two numbers. So similarly, look at an example over here. Consider the operator phi defined as a phi b is equal to 2ab upon a plus b, where a and b are real numbers such that a plus b is not equal to 0. Why do we have to give that a plus b is not equal to 0? Because look over here, the a plus b is in the denominator. So since we cannot have 0 in the denominator because that is not defined, so the question will give us that a plus b is not equal to 0. In fact, in any question, in case there is a variable in the denominator, then we will be specifically given that the variable cannot be 0. We, we deal with real numbers, right? Not with complex numbers. So, Which of the following must be true? All right. So we have a phi b is 2ab upon a plus b. A phi b is given. What is b phi a? b phi a. Now here in this particular expression, whatever is a will be substituted by b. And whatever is b will be substituted by a. So b phi a will be 2 b a upon b plus a. But then note that this is the same as, because b a is same as a b. So this is same as 2 a b. And b plus a is the same as a plus b. So then essentially, both these are the same. a phi b is the same as b phi a. So here, this holds. What about this one now? We know what is a phi b. Let's find what is, what is a 1 by a phi 1 by b. Now, wherever we have a, instead of that, we'll put 1 by a. And wherever we have b, instead of that, we'll put 1 by b. So we get 2 into 1 by a into 1 by b upon a plus b. So 1 upon a plus 1 upon b. Look at that. It gives us 2 upon a b upon a plus b upon a b. The a b, a b get cancelled and we are left with 2 upon a plus b. Now, is it the same as 2ab upon a plus b? No. So then a phi b is not equal to 1 upon a phi 1 upon b. Okay. Let's look at the third one. Minus a phi b is equal to a phi minus b. Now, we'll have to find both of these. So we say minus a phi b. What is this equal to? Wherever we have a, we'll put minus a over there. So we get 2 minus a b upon minus a plus b, which gives us minus 2ab upon minus a plus b. Whereas what is a phi minus b? 
this is equal to 2a. Now, wherever we have b, we put minus b. So, minus b upon a minus b. This is equal to minus 2ab upon a minus b. So, look at this. The numerators are the same, minus 2ab. But the denominators are not. So, b minus a is not the same as a minus b. So, that is why these two are also not equal. Uh, do, do you guys recognize what this expression is? 2ab upon a plus b. This is the harmonic mean of a and b. Again, we look at it shortly. So a user-defined operator is just like any other operator that we use. For example, addition, subtraction, etc. Right? Just that it is not a standard global operator that is used by everyone. It is specifically designed for that question only. Thank you.